The n body problem is a classic problem in physics, and it's where you have n point particles all in space and gravitationally attracted to each other. And I know what you're thinking, the solar system. You have the massive sun in the middle and all the planets orbiting, and it's pretty stable, right? And that's because the sun keeps everything in place, right? The planets aren't too affected by each other. It becomes a little bit more complicated when all the masses are equal, right? Then all the planets are pulling on each other equally and you have a system that's a little bit more complicated and it's really difficult to find stable configurations of these sorts of orbits. Usually you have a planet being ejected or thrown out. It gets spun around something and tossed out. As such, various research groups will use supercomputers to try and find the conditions that result in these stable orbits. And in this video, we're gonna look at some of the results from two papers that I show here. Before we get to end body motion, I just wanna do a quick review of one, two, and three body motion. And for this part of the video, I think I'm gonna actually turn off the helium valve in my room. It's been acting sort of strange lately, so I'm just gonna use no helium for this part. One body motion is pretty steady. Just got one body moving at constant speed. Two bodies ellipse around their center of mass. Unless, of course, their speed is great and they escape each other. There ain't no equation out there known for the motion of three bodies. bodies. <coughs> I had to turn the helium supply back on. Uh, let's get a bit of a sore throat there. So today we got our packages. We're going to import, take a good look. We got NumPy, Matplotlib. We're going to be doing some integrating. We're going to want solve IVP. We're going to use a very specific integral solver here. We're gonna make some animations as well. Now let's talk about the math real quick. Newton's law of gravity, well, F which equals MA, which is uh, true, is equal to G big M, M over R squared for gravity. That's something known from high school. And so A is equal to G capital M over R squared, where M is the big mass and M is getting pulled towards it. Uh, for a collection of masses, where you have many, many, many masses, uh, you write in terms of vector calculus. So here's your acceleration in vector form. And then, so you have mass I, right? and you're summing over j, right? So it's mj, so you have mi, and you do the sum over all the masses, and it says that mi is getting pull, pulled towards all the different mj's, and that rij vector goes from mass i to mj, so you're saying it's getting pulled in this direction, it's getting pulled in this direction, it goes from i to j, i to j, i to j, and you don't sum over the mass itself, the, the, the mass doesn't exert a gravitational force on itself. Uh, so that's everything here, but the dimensions are gross, right? You don't want to be putting in like 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 for G uh, 10 to the 24 for the mass or anything like that uh, So we're gonna define things like this right see this equation here We're gonna write it like this and we've divided by a bunch of things. Everything is primed here uh, Ri prime is Ri divided by L uh, I'll tell you what L is in a second uh, Mi prime is Mi divided by M uh, T prime changes as well. So all the variables change here. Uh, and M and L are characteristic masses and lengths of the problem. So what does that mean? It means that if we're solving a problem where we're dealing with maybe the earth and the sun, and we want to use the earth mass as a unit mass, it means that Rij is equal to one when the distance is one earth sun distance. And the mass is equal to one when say you have one earth mass. So you can pick M and L to be whatever you want so that the units are adjusted on the computer. And you think, okay, well, that's cheating. Like, you know, how do you get the actual solution then? Well, you solve this differential equation as a function of time, T prime, and at the very end, right? So you can plot something as a function of T prime. But then if you want to get it as a function of actual time, you write T is equal to T prime root L cubed over GM. And then you can convert to the actual time frame of your original problem with your units. So you only need to deal with those big numbers at the end, right? So not, not too bad. So let's import these packages. 
Uh, so here we're gonna set M to the mass of the Earth. We're gonna deal with a two-body problem, the Earth-Sun system, and I'm gonna show you how this works. So big M is the mass of the Earth and L is the Earth-Sun distance. So that means I set M1 equal to one because my mass is equal to the mass of the Earth. And the Sun is 333,000 times bigger than the Earth, so we have to have this big number here. Uh, X1 naught, that's the initial position. I'm setting that equal to one which means in X, we're one Earth-Sun distance away. If you plot on an XY plane, Sun is at the middle, Earth starts here. And as for the initial velocities, right, I'm saying that there's an sp initial speed of the Earth, that's gonna be the speed of, that results in circular motion, and that's mp.squareroot.m2. And you might think that's confusing, but circular motion requires V is the square root of A times R. But if you have the, the acceleration formula where G is equal to one and the distance is equal to one, then you have, instead of a is g m over r squared, the g and the r squared are both equal to one, so a is just equal to the mass, and that's the mass of the sun. And so this a times r, well, r is equal to one, and a is equal to m two, right? And so I just have the square root of m two. The units are weird here, right? You think m two and a times r, but no, it's because we've adjusted everything to be dimensionless. We're talking about dimensionless acceleration here. Um, so we have our second order ODE here, right and we can't solve second order odes directly in python but we can convert them into two odes two first order odes so whenever we have a second order ode that looks like this right uh that depends on y dy dt and t you define a new quantity called vy which is dy dt and then you can write the following two first order differential equations and it's kind of a trick right and you say dy dt is vy and dvy dt is equal to this and then you can solve these using a python solver uh, so to define our system, we need, we write S and S is all the variables that we want to solve for. We're going to have the positions of both masses and the velocities of both masses. And we're in a 2D plane and we need to write a function that takes an S returns the S dt. Well, these are all the variables of S, right? It takes in S, it returns all these. And then it returns the distance R12, that's the distance between the earth and the sun. And it will just return dx1 dt, which is vx1, vy1, vx1, vy2. And then all these acceleration terms and the all of these terms here come directly from this formula here and that's the case where you only have one other mass so you're only summing one term and so you only have one of these uh, terms here sorry it comes from technically it comes from this expression here so you have one term and this r prime ij well that gets separated into the x and y components like this so these are the components i didn't want to type all this out because it's it's a lot of like repetition here and so we can solve this differential equation. So I can get my array of times. I believe I ran, uh, I need to run this code here. So we get our array of times, and then it's really easy to solve it for our solution. And we can actually plot X as a function of time and it looks sinusoidal. So we solved it as a function of our dimensionless time, T prime, which is from this equation here, right? And now we need to convert it to T, like I said, using this equation. So we do that here, right? And so this is the conversion factor going from our dimensionless time t prime, which is um, plotted, and to our actual time t, which is in units. So this is our uh, proportionality factor between the two that I showed in that equation. And that gives us seconds, right? It will return the SI units because we're using SI units in our conversion factor. Uh, then we want to convert from seconds to years. So we get t, t divided by, well, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. A little bit of stoichiometry there. And then we have to multiply this by this np.diff t0. Um, that's because the t's themselves, like this will be spaced as, um, like if I look at t here, right? It goes like zero, one times seven to negative four. There's like 10,000 points between zero and one. So I need to take that into account when I create this uh, proportionality factor, because then it's going to be per time step, how many years we have per time step in that array. And so I uh, get the solutions like this and I can make an animation real quick. And as you'll see, we're just doing this to make sure that we do indeed get the corresponding earth going around the sun motion. And so I get a GIF here. And as you can see, it takes one year for the earth to go around the sun. If you look at this time here, and it's not, it sort of we'll go back to zero. Uh, so that's interesting. And uh, now we want to do something a little bit more interesting with the three body problem, right? And so we have three bodies 
and they're going through space and we need the initial conditions and depending on the initial conditions their initial positions and velocities and masses some of the orbits will be stable so there's two papers here um i'll put them in the link of the video you can check them out uh, but they look at the three body problem under the following configurations uh, m1 equals m2 equals 1 so the two masses are equal and m3 can vary a little bit at t equals 0 the initial conditions are that the m3 is in the middle and x1 and x2 are 1 and negative 1 apart so they lie on a line so it's a very specific condition uh, they all lie on y equals 0 so it's just 1 two three like that except three is in the middle of course so it's one three two um at t equals zero v x one equals v x two equals v one so um one and two which are on both sides of m3 are both moving at the same x velocity and they're also moving at the same y velocity right so the mass three in the middle and then you have the two ones at the side moving at the same y velocity and um but the third mass is at going at a certain velocity and it goes at a velocity that makes one the total momentum equal to zero and also the angular momentum equal to zero so these are zero angular momentum states and zero net momentum states and they're configured as such and so we'll look at two sort of interesting configurations uh, i've picked one with very look how look how many digits there are right you have to be super specific here to get these stable motions so uh look you know lots of decimal places for this so one of them has v1 equals this v2 equals this and m3 equals four uh v1 of course is the initial x velocities and v2 is the initial y velocities of the two masses um from the center and m3 equals four and then another one where m3 equals one so uh for example here i'll plug in these numbers so i want this number here and I want this number here. And this has mass three equal to four. So these are the things that I set and then everything else follows from these three numbers. So this sets all my initial conditions. I can define the ODE system. Um, you'll note that now there's the distance between mass one and two, one and three and two and three, cause it makes like a triangle now um, in general throughout motion. So you have these three distances and then you have the following terms. Well dx1 dt is vx1 and then vy1 right those are pretty obvious uh here you have two terms right mass one that's because mass one is being pulled towards mass two and mass three so in the x direction and the y direction you need two gravitational terms each same thing with mass two and mass three mass two gets to mass two gets pulled towards mass one and mass three mass three gets pulled towards mass one and mass two that's why you see these two terms here like this and it's very specific and so i can run this code and we can solve it for a number of times here. Now here's where it's subtle, right? You have to use a very special ODE solver because the system is so chaotic and so like um, influenced by little perturbations that we use something called the DOP853 solver. It's recommended by the paper. And we set really small values for R tall, the relative tolerance and absolute tolerance during the ODE solver. That ensures that when the ODE solver makes a time step, it has to be super careful making sure that it's making very little error. Because if you make error in a chaotic system, you're gonna get something you know very different than what the true solution is. So we can solve this system. I use the proper solver and I set these values really low and we get solutions for the three particles. And so I can plot T versus X1 and you see that there's a periodic thing going on here. And I can also plot, for example, like Y1, this is like the mass one. And you'll get this periodic thing that sort of repeats over and over and over. And I've only solved for the first little bit here. Uh, now we're going to get the actual times here. There should be a multiplication here. Now we solve for the actual times and we can make an animation. And I should note as well that um, the conversion factors I'm using are G and I'm plugging in, uh, I believe this is the mass of the sun. So we have three suns orbiting and it's also earth sun distance here as well. And so here I have my animation and I can open this up here and watch beautiful motion here. You can see what's happening. The two masses are sort of tossing that other mass back and forth. And this is like super precise because even if something was moved just a little bit, you wouldn't get a motion that's that stable. And you can see as it comes, these masses come close to that one, it just gets launched back out, right? And you can see this is uh, in terms of number of years at the top here. 
So I'm uh, showing sort of a, a unit up here. So very, 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 very neat. And there's a name for these motions and you can look in the papers and they all have like names like butterfly and dragonfly and all sorts of fancy stuff. 